Vintage Hollywood may always be known for its classy style and stellar performances from icons that would last through centuries, but beneath the glitz and glamour lies a dirty secret. Hollywood is not one for the faint of heart, and those who struggled to cope with the effects, or lack thereof, of fame, found themselves staring at the bottom of their glass. For today, we'll be letting you in on the list of the 13 worst alcoholics in Hollywood history. And you'd be surprised at how a few of them even succumb to it in the worst way possible. If you want to know who these are, then you better keep watching to learn more. Kickstarting today's list is the English actor Oliver Reed. This striking blue-eyed gentleman made a name for himself through popular blockbusters such as The Trap, Bill Sykes, and Oliver. And he was even hailed as the fifth most popular star at the box office in 1971 for his acting prowess. On screen, he was charismatic and dedicated, and commanded such a presence, which is no wonder why he was one of the more popular actors during the late 1960s through the 1980s. Being in the spotlight meant all eyes were on the actor's every activity, which is why it's no secret how much of an alcoholic he was. The English writer Robert Sellers detailed in his book, Hellraisers, The Life and Inebriated Times of Richard Burton, Peter O'Toole, Richard Harris, and Oliver Reed, how the actor downed a staggering 100 pints in just 24 hours. According to the author, these four actors were known as the greatest hellraisers that ever walked, staggered, or fell into a pub. Which goes to show just how much Reed and his colleagues were enjoying alcohol. He may have had fun with alcohol, but it was also the very thing that led to the actor's demise. During a filming break in Ridley Scott's Gladiator back in 1999, Oliver Reed spent his spare time at an Irish bar in Valletta, Malta, where he drank to his heart's content an alarming amount of alcoholic drinks that consisted of half a bottle of whiskey, 12 shots of rum, 8 pints of lager, and a couple of cognacs to wash it all down. A little while later, he got into a bar fight with five young Navy sailors, and they fought it out through arm wrestling. Unfortunately, Reed did not live to see the next day because he collapsed the same night. He was immediately wheeled into an ambulance, but he was pronounced dead despite his friend's efforts to resuscitate him before he could reach the hospital. For his role as Antonius Proximo in Gladiator, Oliver Reed was posthumously awarded a BAFTA for Best Supporting Actor. And if we're talking about the suave, dashing, and swashbuckling stars of vintage Hollywood, you can't leave out the name of the Australian actor Errol Flynn. As charming as he was, he too fell under the vices of Hollywood. Drinking, women, substance abuse, you name it. Downing alcohol has been a staple in Flynn's social activities since this liquid courage fueled his friendships, romances, and daring adventures. Speaking of adventures, he was also notorious for his barroom brawls. There was even one occasion when he stole a police officer's badge. Some of his famous drinking buddies include fellow actors, John Barrymore, Ava Gardner, David Niven, Humphrey Bogart, and even Frank Sinatra. He was known for his love of champagne and even brought French wines wherever he went, especially if he knew that the places they were headed to had no known high-end liquor stores. During the last years of his life, vodka became his favorite poison, to the point that he could drink a bottle of it daily, much to his liver's detriment. That didn't stop the man from consuming it, and he even went to extreme measures, injecting vodka into his oranges whenever he was forbidden to drink on set. Like all vices, consuming alcohol became detrimental to his health, and before long, his once handsome face, which was the envy of many, became bloated. He died suffering from a heart attack on October 14, 1959, at the age of 50. During his autopsy, the medics were surprised that he managed to live that long, considering how he was such an alcoholic and abused his body with various substances. Another icon who fell under the throes of alcohol was the actor John Barrymore. In fact, alcohol consumed him and his siblings. Not a lot of people are aware of who this once big shot was, but most would identify him as the washed-up alcoholic actor. His life was already a hot topic even at such a young age, growing up with an alcoholic father who preferred to spend time with his grandmother. He was still a minor when he made it a habit of drinking his grandmother's visitor's half-empty wine glasses until he passed out. His drinking only got worse when his grandmother passed it away when he was 14, and from there, the young Barrymore confessed that he was a more or less alcoholic drunkard to a doctor. Despite this, his acting prowess was greatly applauded by many, and he was a natural when it came to light comedy and various plays. There was even one story wherein he performed Hamlet's soliloquy seated and fully drunk. 
making the viewers believe how innovative his execution was, only for the actor to admit that he was unable to stand due to drunkenness, which was why he was seated. In the later years of his life, he became so dependent on alcohol that producers refused to employ him, and he even scored various roles playing drunks, like in his final film appearance, Playmates, back in 1941. Death claimed him on May 19, 1942, in the middle of a line recording of Romeo and Juliet. The once great actor collapsed and was taken to Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital, where he died due to cirrhosis of the liver and kidney failure, complicated by pneumonia. As sad as this may be, the American actress and one of the top stars of the golden age of Hollywood, Rita Hayworth, is also included in today's list of the worst alcoholics. Like many of the icons listed here, she also suffered terribly behind the scenes. At such a young age, she was forced to take up dancing and eventually caught the eye of the head of Fox Film Corporation, Winfield Sheehan. From there, she landed a series of small roles, eventually climbing up the ladder, but not without a price. Because of her Spanish roots, she was limited to the role of portraying the exotic dancer. Ultimately, she decided to cave in and change her appearance. She dyed her hair and got electrolysis, giving her a more American look. Rita Hayworth had an impressive run in Hollywood and was even called the love goddess by the press, apart from being the top pinup girl during World War II. It's pretty ironic, though, that she has the worst love life as she got herself entangled with men who only want to control her or take advantage of her. As successful as she may be, the actress had no one she could confide in and ended up being misinterpreted in a lot of ways despite her attempts to conform to their standards. Her second husband, Orson Welles, noted the actress's alcohol problem during their marriage, but he didn't believe that was the case. However, her son, Yasmin Aga Khan, believed otherwise and could only look on as he helplessly watched his mother get consumed by alcohol. It even worsened to the point that she suffered an alcoholic breakdown that landed her in the hospital. Alcohol was also the very same reason why they realized too late that Rita Hayworth was actually suffering from the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Her son believed that it was just alcoholic dementia until the papers picked it up, which led to her being diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 1980. The poor actress had to suffer two decades of hell before they could pinpoint her illness, but Hayworth eventually succumbed to death at the age of 68 from complications associated with Alzheimer's disease. Continuing with the list of alcoholics is another hellraiser, the Welsh actor Richard Burton. He rose to prominence as one of the more impressive Shakespearean actors during the 1950s and was even highly considered the successor to Laurence Kerr Olivier. Sadly, he was not able to rise to their expectations and it didn't help that Burton was also notorious for his heavy drinking, which many believed was the cause of his talent going to waste. It was no secret that the Welsh actor was an alcoholic throughout his adult life, and English author Robert Sellers even said that Burton was known to consume at least three to four bottles of hard liquor daily. The actor even almost drank himself to death during the filming of the movie The Klansman, where he was dried out at a hospital in Santa Monica, California. Throughout filming, many of his scenes had to be done either while he was lying or sitting because he was unable to stand on his own. The actor even admitted to his co-star later on that he didn't remember making the movie. Good times aside, Richard Burton's alcoholism got so bad that he used to take antabuse to stop himself from excessive drinking. Alcohol was also the reason why he believed his marriage to Elizabeth Taylor fell apart. At 41, his body was already declining rapidly and was already limping by his mid-40s, apart from suffering from a myriad of diseases like cirrhosis, dermatitis, arthritis, and an enlarged kidney. In the end, he died at the age of 58 due to an intracerebral hemorrhage. On to the next Hollywood heavy drinker, we have the American actor, comedian, and writer William Claude Dukenfield. Nicknamed W.C. Fields, he became famous as a silent juggler and was known for his raspy drawl and pompous vocabulary. The actor's character often portrayed a fondness for alcohol, which he surprisingly didn't share until he felt the loneliness of constant travel. In the end, he kept liquor in his dressing room and then began to drink regularly after giving up his career as a juggler. If there was one role that cemented his role as an alcoholic, it was his portrayal of Professor Henry R. Quayle in the 1933 pre-comedy International House. In the film, he was an aviator who had an unquenchable thirst for beer, a characteristic that the actor adopted in real life. He was also one of the many actors who filmed while inebriated. Yet, surprisingly, 
their intoxication only added an edge to their performance, which made the viewers love their characters even more. Sadly, Fields suffered the slow demise of his career and spent the last 22 months of his life at a sanitarium in California, where he died at the age of 66 on Christmas. Multi-award winner William Holden is also on our list today, and he is probably the most tragic ending out of all the actors here. Holden won a series of prestigious awards, such as the Academy Award for Best Actor and the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Role in a Limited Anthology Series or Movie. He had a series of good films and roles that made him popular in Hollywood, but like all good things, nothing lasts forever. When the 1960s rolled around, he found himself not only competing with the new generation of actors, but his popularity was also declining. This made him turn to alcohol, and it even got worse because it was an open secret for years, now that the actor has quite a reputation when it comes to drinking, Despite this notoriety, Holden was steadfast in his craft, continuing to take on roles right until the end. William Holden died on November 12, 1981, as he bled after suffering from a horrible fall that cut his forehead. According to the Los Angeles County Coroner's Autopsy Report, the actor was intoxicated and slipped on a rug, hitting his head as he bled to death. Continuing with the list, we have one of the most handsome actors of his time, Montgomery Clift. This four-time Academy Award nominee is often seen portraying moody and sensitive young men and is considered one of the pioneers of method acting, along with Marlon Brando and James Dean. Clift had it all, money, fame, and the love of the public, but things turned for the worse after he suffered a terrible car crash. At the time, the actor was on his way home after attending a party hosted by Elizabeth Taylor and her husband when the actor was found bleeding and swelling under the shattered dashboard by Elizabeth Taylor and the latter even had to pull a tooth that was cutting into his tongue. His face suffered terrible pain, which required him to get plastic surgery. He then proceeded to resume filming two months after the accident. Despite making a full recovery, Clift still suffered continued pain, which led him to turn to alcohol and other substances for relief. Although his facial restructure was deemed impressive at the time, there were still noticeable differences in the actor's face, and many believed that this was what ruined him, leading him to drink more. Montgomery Cliff died at the age of 45 in his New York City town who's due to a heart attack. Many believed that it was his substance abuse that contributed to his death. His autopsy later revealed that the actor was also suffering from dysentery, lingering colitis, and an underactive thyroid. Wizard of Oz star Judy Garland also sadly suffered from alcoholism and substance abuse, despite her fame and fortune. Like many young starlets, Garland suffered from her personal life at a tender age, and it didn't help that the pressures of her stardom tormented her physical and mental health. What's even worse is that many of the people in the industry manipulated her, claiming that she was not attractive enough and forcing her to change her appearance. Because of this, Garland leaned on alcohol and several substances, and the pressure continued to plague her for years to come. On the evening of June 22, 1969, the actress was found by her husband of three months, Mickey Deans, unconscious and unresponsive. He immediately called Scotland Yard, and the actress was pronounced dead due to a barbiturate overdose and that it was accidental. She was only 47. Despite this, an attending specialist claimed that the actress was already living on borrowed time because of cirrhosis. Another great actor who died a terrible death due to alcohol is the multifaceted Jack Cassidy. An accomplished singer and theater director, Cassidy won many accolades, such as a Tony Award and a Grammy Award, and was even nominated for a Primetime Emmy multiple times. Sadly, to be an artist is to struggle with life, which is something Cassidy did despite everything he has achieved and owned. His eldest son even wrote how he grew worried about his father's increasing alcohol abuse, especially since Jack Cassidy suffered not only from alcoholism, but also from bipolar disorder. The man of many talents met his untimely demise one night on December 11, 1976. Prior to his death, Cassidy even asked his ex-wife Shirley if she would fancy sharing a drink with him at his California apartment only for the latter to refuse, not knowing that this was the last time she would be able to talk to him. The following morning, the actor lit a cigarette and fell asleep shortly on his couch. He dropped the cigarette which burned the couch and quickly spread through the whole apartment. After the fire was put out, they recovered a charred body near the front door of the apartment, 
which was identified as Cassidy's based on his dental records. Moreover, they also found the body wearing a ring that bore the Cassidy family crest. In the end, Jack Cassidy's family cremated his remains and scattered them in the Pacific Ocean. American film and TV actress Gail Russell also met her demise due to alcohol, which is an unfortunate way to go for the Hedy Lamar of Santa Monica. The actress was blessed with such beauty that it landed her a contract with Paramount at the age of 18, and she made her debut the following year in the movie Henry Aldrich Gets Glamour. She got her first taste of alcohol when the head of makeup on the set of The Uninvited suggested to the young actress that she drink alcohol to calm her nerves. It did its magic, but at the same time it also spelled Russell's slow descent to her demise. She was also under a lot of pressure, which is why it didn't come as a surprise that she was a known alcoholic by 1950. She was only 36 when she met our creator, and right before that, she would periodically stop drinking and take it up again. Russell died due to liver damage brought on by acute and chronic alcoholism and was found by two of her neighbors who grew worried after not seeing the actress for several days. She was found with an empty bottle of vodka by her side and her home was filled with empty bottles as well. And if we're talking about one such icon who died a tragic and depressing death due to alcohol, we could not leave out one of the bathing beauties, Marie Prevost. The actress rose to prominence during the silent film era and was credited with 121 silent and sound films. Max Sennett was the first to discover this beauty and had her signed with Universal, but it was at Warner Brothers that Prevost's career as a leading lady bloomed. She was notable for her performances in The Marriage Circle, Three Women, and Kiss Me Again. But unfortunately, her career declined at an alarming rate once Warner Brothers dropped her. As if that wasn't bad enough, she suffered a lot of problems in her personal life, including the death of her mother and her crumbling marriage to the actor Kenneth Harlan. Prevost fell into depression and started to not only binge eat but also turn to alcohol, which caused her to gain weight and struggle to secure more roles. In the end, her heavy drinking led her to the grave, as acute alcoholism claimed her at the age of 40 on January 21, 1937. She died a poor woman, with her estate only valued at $300, but her death prompted the foundation of the motion picture and television country house and hospital. Finally, last but not least on today's list is The Great One, American actor and comedian Jackie Gleason. The man was also an accomplished writer and composer who also basked in the music industry's spotlight. But for someone who's known for being so jolly, one might never know of his tragic past and how his father abandoned him and his elder brother died at a young age. The actor was never shy about turning away his love for alcohol and even said once that he's not an alcoholic but a drunkard. He was a man who enjoyed drinking and even showed up on stage drunk as hell, which should be enough reason to sack him, but not Gleason. His talent was far too good to throw him out because of his drunken stupor. Because of this, his reputation as a drunkard spread far and wide in both the music and acting industries. In later years, his drinking problem got worse since he became mean, grumpy, and just about ready to jump anyone if he was aggravated. He got a good run in both industries until his death on June 24, 1987, at age 71, after suffering from multiple health issues. But colon cancer was ruled the ultimate cause of it all. And with that, we're wrapping up today's video about the 13 worst alcoholics in Hollywood history. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button with the notification bell on so you won't miss out on any of our latest updates. Until then, stay golden.